Hello and welcome back to the workshop on attributes and WAPs inside Houdini. This is episode two and we will learn how to make selections and groups based on the attributes that we can create. So as per usual, let's get started with geometry. And in this case, uh, we previously were using spheres and torus. This time around, we will use the box because I just want to make a box that will look uh, like with the insets that kind of looks like a maze, sort of like um, think of the box from Ghibli's Laputa Castle in the Sky. So we drop the attribute up, go inside, and as you, as if you could already imagine, uh, we will use noise uh, to generate colors, and we will select and extrude and group based on this color. Not because color is something you must use, but just for purposes to be more uh, visual. We will discuss how to create our attributes that we like uh, in a different video, in the next video. For now, we will just focus on selecting by attribute. So, uh, I just happen to know, and if you probably have seen my uh, mantra shading videos, uh, you might already be familiar as well that uh, the whirly noise, uh, if you feed one noise into another noise, uh, especially if it's Manhattan or Chebyshev noises, uh, they will give you the result that will look kind of like a maze structure. So let's see what we have. So as per usual discussed uh, in the previous section, we connect P for position and we connect distance to the color for now and we will see that we have some kind of result. So basically if we have the Euclidean, it will look like the cellular, cellular noise. I will increase the divisions a little bit so you can see it a bit more clearly. But uh, if we use Manhattan or the other one, uh, you will see that it has like this structure, kind of like a maze. Um, so if I hold down the Alt and drag and drop and create another kind of copy of this and I drag the, now I drag the distance into the frequency and uh, let's see, maybe Manhattan, maybe Chebyshev, or maybe we drag distance into actually the position. Uh, you can see that we have more defined um, kind of colors that look like a maze. Although I think well, that we will get rid of frequency. And yeah, this looks interesting. And of course we can tweak, uh, you know, the, the offset of the colors, in our case, using the slider that is called the offset. Uh, anyway, so there is that. As we can see, we now have some sort of colorized box. And now, if I drop down the group node, now, as we have previously discussed, um, normals, positions, and colors, in our case, are just adjust attributes that we can select. For example, I can uh, select um, by normal, right? And uh, we can just select the faces on the top. So what will happen is that the faces which have the attributes normal facing upwards, as in 0, 1, 0, and 1 being the maximum for the y-axis that goes from top to bottom, we are just selecting based on this attribute. So what if, I'll um, disable this, what if we wanted to select some, um, just the faces, and by the way, let's make the group type primitives and run over primitives. So it works actually on faces. And we will then select the group of primitives or faces in our case, it's, it's, it's kind of the same. Um, and the base group will be at for attributes, CD for color. Technically it's color diffuse, but you know, you don't need to be thinking about this. Bigger than 0 0.15. And as you can see, immediately we have some sort of interesting looking selection. So since the result is not a lot of white color, but 
gray, low gray, like black-ish. Uh, this is why we select something close to zero. For example, if we select something bigger than 0 0.5, there is nothing like that. 0 0.3, eh, just this. Uh, 0 0.2, we get closer to zero, and we can see that there is more and more being selected. So sweet spots, I think, will be 0 0.15. Okay, what next? Uh, next, uh, we will be dropping a pull extrude as, as per usual, tab, PXT, shift tab to drop immediately uh, connected. And the group will be group one. Uh, connected components looks about right and the distance will just get it a little bit inside. And we immediately, if I drop the null just to get rid of everything that we don't want to see, we immediately see the result. Uh, we have this kind of like faceted, um, how do I say it, faceted, maybe like maze structure that has been inset off, uh, on itself. So what else can we do? Uh, we can do the same thing over again. So I will subdivide to, you know, have more, um, more geometry to work on. Uh, the depth will be one, one is just fine. I will overwrite the weight value so it doesn't get smooth results and the crease something bigger than one will be fine because you know our depth of subdivision is one, crease weight bigger than one anything will be just working just fine. Um, again, next up, um, if we want to kind of run the same attribute VAP but maybe with a little bit different parameters, we can just hold down the Alt key, drag and drop it here, connect it once again and um, change the uh, frequency, for example, of the noise, make it, make it a bit more frequent, for example, because uh, since we divided our geometry, we have more geometry to work with, so frequency, uh, bigger frequency will not be a problem. Next up, we'll create a, another group, and this time it will be group one, so it doesn't mess with the group, uh, group two, I'm sorry, the group two will not mess with group one again, uh, at CD bigger than 0 point of this time 0 0.2 for example or maybe uh, 1 uh, 9 just just slightly more of the selection and again I will be pull extruding this time around group 2 distance will be a bit smaller like negative 0 point let's see 0 0.1 okay this destroys everything uh, 0 0.03, 2, this time around uh, we will be doing the individual elements so the uh, geometry doesn't get destroyed and again just to clear the selections up I'll drop the normal node and as you can see we indeed have some kind of like this structure that has been inset, it looks like the Griebel effect and whatnot, it looks Really interesting. And the final thing, I will drop the environment lights. Um, I will select the uh, Li Nong because it's kind of like um, moody, almost raining atmosphere and whatnot. And uh, there you go. If you don't like the colors, you can overwrite the colors going back into our geometry, dropping down the color node and make it, for example, white. But me personally, I, I am more or less like the version where it is being colorized by our noise. It gives it, you know, a bit more interesting look. So there you go. Uh, of course, we can get back to our sphere, right? And uh, let's let's uh, see. Uh, well, it, it should work, basically. Of course, uh, we have to make our sphere as a polygon mesh and uh, create lots of additional geometry. Of course, a sphere has a uh, looks a little bit different, so you will have to fiddle a little bit more with attribute vops to. Uh, maybe select different noises if you like, if you don't like, because uh, the Euclidean one works better on the kind of like boxy geometry. But nevertheless, this is how you create. In our case, we just write the attribute in the color. And for ease of use purposes, 
we are selecting groups based on colors. And remember, if something doesn't work, it probably is because you forgot to run over the primitives because uh, our goal was not just to move points around, our goal was to pull extrude things. So if you want to pull extrude, you have to run the attribute swap on primitives, uh, select the group on primitives and run the pull extrude on set primitives. So hopefully this clears it out and the next videos we will learn more about attributes so stay tuned if you like what you see press the like button if you um, have ideas suggestions maybe questions comments uh, leave them in the comments under the video um, hope to see you next videos thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and have a nice day